Okay, welcome back again. Hello. And uh, this time I will show you how you can actually clean the aperture system in the uh, this old Mamiya Sikor C. Uh, it's a 2.8 lens at um, 45 millimeter focal length. So uh, let's see what we can do with this. Whoa. It's an interesting lens. Um, maybe you should zoom out a little because we need some tools. Now, um, this lens is, uh, it looks pretty nice. I mean, fine and clean glasses and the, the focus ring and the aperture ring looks really fine. <coughs> but uh, what we cannot see here is the aperture is actually not working at all. I mean, almost. So if I stop down the uh, from 2.8 to aperture 22, so the aperture ring works pretty good. And uh, I set it to auto. And if I push the aperture connection pin to the camera, look what happened. Okay. As you can see, there is some oil and there is really a lot of course i took a sneak peek inside the lens to see what how it looks and how difficult it is and what's the difference between the other the other lens i made in the the video before this one and uh yeah there are some differences but Oh, there are also many similar points that uh, I will guide you through. So, <clears throat> but we to fix this lens, we need some tools. First, we need some screwdrivers. <clears throat> this is the JIS. Um, it's a two millimeter. I would guess it's a JIS uh, zero zero zero. But I also use my my uh, modified pH zero zero because I have filed and grind the tip so it fits perfect in the screw. A flat uh, flat uh, screwdriver. This is a two point four millimeter. It's also very handy because there are some parts inside that need to be unscrewed with that. A uh, an old compass or just a lens tool. Um, this is a one very old which I have filed and grind and bent the, the two legs just a little so it will work as a lens spinner. Uh, we will also use some uh, lens sucker uh, which is pretty handy with putting in the blades. This is a, the biggest one in this set from uh, Nordson. Uh, you can Google the name. So, but Nordson um, lens sucker. Uh, I think you will get it. There's any. Um, uh, maybe I should put the name on here. Yeah. Well. So uh, some gaskets or rubber tools in different sizes is also very handy. Um, this is the, the set of six different things from Japan Hobby Tool and uh, it's very very handy and good tool for working with lenses. But you can also go to the hardware store and buy some gasket for plumbing tubes. This is a 60mm and the point is the rubber is extremely sticky so it will it works really good to working with some lenses. But also the set of uh, nine different, uh, there's only three here, um, with different uh, rubber tools, uh, you can get them on the on Amazon. I have modified this so it's more uh, deeper um, 
curved. So it's, uh, yeah, it works better <coughs> for me. There are some dentist tool which is pretty handy. And of course, some uh, tweezers. Yes. And uh, yeah, and I made one special tweezer, which I have uh, filed in a special way, so I can really um, lift up the blade or put in the blade. It's really good, very easy to use, and uh, easy to make by if you have a file. Just a good uh, file, so you can make this or Dremel tool. And of course, we also need some uh, isopropyl alcohol, which yes, I have in this container. I mean bowl. So, <clears throat> and that's yeah. Let's jump into it. Uh, clear off the table here. So first, we need to. Um, go in from the front, take off the nameplate, which is uh, unscrew counterclockwise, with a bigger, um, this is a 72, 70, uh, 0.2 millimeter, one of those rubber tools. Simply put it on and have a good grip and unscrew it. There are two lens screws that we need to take out, so it's pretty good material, aluminium. Now, <clears throat> first you see one lens, it's the front, but actually it's only part of the front lens group, which is in two parts, uh, because I will unscrew the not the retaining ring, it's actually the whole lens group I took off. I unscrew. And for this I will use the um, this tool again, because they have a good grip and not too small. <coughs> and remember there's no notches around here, so you simply need a rubber tool. So, and when you are almost there, turn over the lens, and the lens, uh, the front lens, will fall out. So, that's it. Now, the next uh, lens group, which could be, is, I think it should be the middle group, but the... Um, <clears throat> because it's not really part of the front lens group. But um, here we need a... Um, here you cannot use the lens uh, rubber tool to unscrew the uh, this uh, middle group. Because there are two notches here, there, and there. I can see other people have been in here. It doesn't really matter, but um, so <clears throat> and with this uh, rubber tool, I mean <laughs> lens tool, get a good grip here, so it fits perfect here. And there, uh, in this lens, the the this lens group was really it was really tight to unscrew. But since I have been into it at first, uh, it should be easier. So, have a good grip and then <coughs> still tight. And it doesn't seem they have used any um, uh, thread lock. Oh, come on. So, so one can actually unscrew it uh, almost all the way, but it's actually easier to do the rest of it with a rubber tool. 
because then you have a more controlled movement of what's going on. So there. And there is a very tight fit in this one. So uh, and it would it can be a problem. You see, you can also of course I should have said that. You can also use a uh, rubber, I mean lens uh, tool in the two small holes instead of using the other one but well I decided to do use the two notches and then it uh, it should be possible to lift up the the lens element I mean the lens group but there is oil on on this uh, I mean, in this, this, this uh, around the lens uh, group. <clears throat> well, let's see if I can uh, help to unscrew it. Yeah. <clears throat> so it will be easier to do this in that way. <laughs> so. Take care of the lens because on the back here there sits the and it's completely flat but I mean in line with the in the thread here so don't put it that way down put it on the side or on a kind of a rubber tool which could be this one So no no I know where it is. <clears throat> so now we are actually much more into the mechanical part of the aperture. And uh, there's uh, the only screws we need to unscrew in this case. Don't uh, think about um, unscrew those screws around here it's not necessary the screws you need to unscrew is this one this one here and the last one here there's also a kind of a brass ring around here that you probably if there's too much oil in it you also need to unscrew that but not yet. So I'll go to the back of the lens because we also need to take parts out in here. There are three screws around here. This one, this one and this one it needs to be unscrewed. And I use my uh, zero zero screwdriver to unscrew it. And they are longer screws. And um, have a good grip on here. So things not just fall on the on the desktop. So and when uh, moving, I mean <laughs> when I take out the screws here, <clears throat> all three of them, it uh, could be that this part will, the actually mount will move a little because of the uh, spring inside. So uh, and now I can actually un take out the the mount and the. Uh, button here for the auto manual changer will also come out. There is a pin here that is connected to the camera connection 
and it will go in let's go in here uh, it will go in this hole here you see you can move it and it will it uh, will do the same as I this pin was putting in here difficult to see if the light I know but I will show you uh, more detail so the aperture ring also needs to come off it will be more handy and the back lens group will also come off so uh, let's just get rid of the the uh, the back lens group there's no need to use a lens tool but you can use a rubber tool this one uh, it's very handy, but uh, this is also very handy because it's very sticky. So just put it on uh, Not not in the center. It's not necessary. Oh, maybe yeah It's it would be fine. There's a 36 millimeter in diameter in here and it could be used as a rubber tool and then you have a good grip and simply unscrew it. Take care of the very uh, the lens element here because it's absolutely flat. So put it on a safe stand or whatever. So it will not um, be damaged, scratch or something. Now there are three screws to take out the the aperture ring, this one here, there, and there, there, and there. But before doing so, it will make it uh, easier for you. You have the index mark here, which is red, and just make a scratch here so you not get confused of how should the ring sit. So just put a small scratch here in the metal. I mean, no one will see it, and it will make it a lot easier for you to put it back in again. It looks like one screw here is damaged, I think. I mean, it could be someone has used a Phillips screwdriver and not JIS. But with a modified Phillips screwdriver, it will work. Or a, or a real. Yeah, I guess. And when taking off this ring here, you should keep two fingers on the aperture ring itself because there is a small spring inside here somewhere with the small steel ball that makes the click of the aperture ring. So. Uh, don't just take it out because then you may probably miss the spring and the steel ball. So see the screws are pretty long, but don't uh, mix them with the other. <clears throat> it looks like it's the same, but uh, just to be sure, keep them separate. See. Now the uh, this ring will come off. <laughs> I should have take out the screws. Well, but we will do it right now. So there, out. There's also a lot of oil around here. This is the auto manual um, ring. And now this cam still have a good uh, grip on the aperture ring so it will not just come off, not yet. But um, <clears throat> this cam ring also needs to come off. It's connected to the, with this pin here, see, uh, this pin here. 
it's connected to the notch here in the aperture ring. But it also connected to this pin here. It's also connected um, to the cam ring, which you probably can see I move here. So, and uh, if I can do, show it here, I will close the aperture as much as, as it can. And then this camped ring with this pin here, it, if I uh, move the aperture ring, it will open the aperture system. But there is so much in oil in this one that it, um, if I move the ring again, it has not changed in, not in the spring because there's too much oil. So it will not close the aperture again. So uh, we need to go further into it, which I will show you. So away with this. This ring is actually okay. No problem with that. But now we come to the point, <coughs> another point, um, having, uh, where did it go? Yeah, just so I remember when I show you this in the video, where the steel ball and the, um, for the aperture and the spring is in here. I mean, I set a scratch here so I can sh uh, show you where it is close to. So it sits under here and pressure out to the ring. So when moving the ring here, don't go any further until here. So the the space between the the aperture rings movement is the uh, this notch here will go from one side over here all the way over to here. So, but when take off the aperture ring, keep a hand on here and then lift up the ring because it will prevent the spring and the steel ball from fooling around and you will probably never get it back again. Maybe. <laughs> so here it is. This is the steel ball here, which is pretty tiny. Put it away <clears throat> and then take out the spring. So. And now we are almost closer to the plates, even if we go in from this side. But <clears throat> there are some parts we need to take off. There is the spring here, the screws here, the screw, <laughs> only one, <laughs> need to be unscrewed fully. And there is a locking ring around this uh, tube for the, the back lens group. And there is another part down here. This. Uh, half moon shape. <clears throat> so first take off the the little spring. It can be a little tricky but using a pointy tweezer it should be possible as you can see there. Now <clears throat> then I can unscrew this screw I use a 2.4 millimeter flathead, which fits in the uh, screw head perfect. So, and it sits pretty tight. There's no thread lock on it, so it's not a problem. This has a funny shape, as you can see, because the hole in here 
is bigger. So away with that. <coughs> and then I can uh, take out the lock ring, which can be a little tricky. So we need a um, flathead. No, just take my pointy tweezer. Now hold in one side of the the ring, and they use a flat tool. This is dentist tool, and lift up on the other side, and uh, if it's possible. Can be a little tricky. <laughs> okay, where's my small screwdriver here? So lift it up and then use a dentist tool, which is really handy in this case because then you can lift it up all the way around. So, now the, the lock ring is uh, easy to lift up. Sits pretty tight, which it should. Where did it go here? And just uh, have a tweezer over it so it will not just pop around. So, this is how it looks thin. And there's also a lot of oil on this, which you probably can see. It's not a big problem around this ring, but uh, I think I will clean it off anyway because <clears throat> the aperture system needs to be oil free. I mean, free of oil. So one can lift up the, the camped ring here. And hopefully it's also have a tight fit. And just so you know where it should sit, and don't get confused. Oh, should it sit that way? Oh, should it sit that way? So I just make a scratch here. So uh, I'm sure and also uh, make it easier for you to see what is the difference in the two sides. It's not much, but it's important. Now the next part is <clears throat> this uh, half moon uh, shaped piece of metal. It's also need to come out. There's not really oil on it. I mean, not much, but it also needs to be clean. So, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that was all for, for this side. You can see there is some oil, which I will clean away with uh, cotton buds <coughs> and um, some isopropyl alcohol. Now on the other side, which is where the blades is, <coughs> um, somebody has made a scratch here, around here. And uh, I'll zoom in a little. Somebody has made a scratch here, and it's good because uh, if you just loosen the three screws, you will have no idea where it actually should sit, so the aperture is correct. So, therefore, like the other video I made about the other Mamiya lens, I put a scratch here. Or it could be over here, it doesn't really matter as long as you put a scratch. So, and uh, there are three screws around here, there, there, and there. That needs to be 
taken out. The small screws. It could be that the blades will come out when I lift out the plate here. Another good thing is when setting a scratch, you know how the plate should face upward. Because if you turn it around, uh, it will not it will not work. So I think all the blades will come out. <laughs> in one single sequence so um, but let's see how it will go so you can lift out the plate here no they actually stick to the inside of the lens the focusing system and what got we here what we got here a lot of oil <laughs> there's really much I will just put it into the isopropyl alcohol and let it sit there. And I will see. Also, all the other parts go in. So they will have a good shower. And this one will also go in. Now, <coughs> now it's time to take out the blades, but before doing so, there is some, just a, another part, the brassing here around is also very oily. And uh, then I will use this mark as reference to set it here. So I know how the ring should sit. So. I know it's difficult to see, but it is there. So, and also out with this ring. And uh, we have to remember what screw holes is actually in use. So I'll just make a uh, here around this screw hole because then I am um, I'm very sure where this ring should sit so and when I take out the ring I will also make a scratch on where the screw should sit that's important so take out the whole ring and put into the just to be sure where it should sit. So there is a scratch as you can see and then I can just take out the blades and I can actually take the whole ring out where the blade sits in I mean hopefully so have a good grip here with a dented um, Dented tweezer, and as we look closer to it, there is a lot of oil, <laughs> so it's therefore this is really sticky. So, <clears throat> put it into the isopropyl alcohol and get the blade loose. The blade can only sit in one position, so there is no, nothing to be worried about. The blades are made of metal, so um, 
So, and then uh, I will just let it stay there for some minutes. I mean, I will just take a break, get something to eat, so I will be back sooner. Stay tuned. Okay, so we continue after a break. And uh, I will simply just clean the internal part of the aperture system. Uh, just let this all those parts stay in this uh, bowl of uh, isopropyl alcohol. So, <laughs> and uh, then I will just clean the the inside here of the lens. So, and the uh, I will use some. Tweezers, I mean, <laughs> not trees, cotton buds. So, with the uh, isopropyl alcohol on. And uh, I think we'll do the job because there's really a lot of oil film. All the oil comes from only one place and it's the focusing system. Is the only place it can come from. So if you wonder where it, where all this uh, fuel, <laughs> not fuel <laughs> but oil, come from, it's it's uh, the reason. So. Yeah, we'll have to use more than one curtain, but because there's really a lot here, especially the area where the uh, blades is uh, with this ring that comes here is sitting, and one can use a microfiber cloth get the rest of the things away and I think it will do a really good job in that way so and now we only need to do the this is the most important part of it I mean of course all the parts are and I um, important but especially this area down here is important because of the it's where the blades is uh, sitting on but also the back of um, of the lens needs to be to be cleaned a little because some of the part is really sticky and the aperture system has not strong springs that uh, can move the the parts as long as there is a lot of oil on. But it will be much better when it's done. So this will be an almost new lens. I mean, hopefully. Uh, so, it actually looks fine from here. So, now <clears throat> it's time to clean the uh, all the blades and parts in there. I will just take it over here then begin to clean all of this uh, stuff. Uh, 
and it's pretty easy <coughs> with some uh, napkins which is very handy in that case here they are not very expensive and they <coughs> are doing a fine cleaning tissues from the oil so and it looks pretty good there's still some here So, <clears throat> and uh, now all those parts here, some of the parts are not that uh, dirty or so, but you can see here, uh, probably, I know it's difficult on, on a white tissue, but there is a lot of dirt in here. It's also important that you you really dry the edge of those uh, ring because it's there also therefore where the uh, the oil is and will get the the parts sticky. <coughs> This is the ring where the uh, where the aperture blade sits on, and it really has to be very clean from oil. Especially on the edge. So And it looks pretty good now from before it was a really really <coughs> oily and um, then the brass ring it's not that important it's just a spacer uh, between the uh, so the plate has some room to move into and the uh, half moon shape piece of metal As you can see, there is a lot of dirt, so <laughs> you really need the, the good care. And now the uh, locking ring. So, and it looks fine. So all the part needs that treatment. And things will run smooth and without any stickiness. So and the last ring the cover for the plate
It will look like it's a new. So it's really fine and ready to put back. The only thing I need to do is clean the blades. I mean, dry off the blades from isopropyl alcohol. And for that, I will use my uh, lens tissue. I mean, I mean my lens cloth because it it dries much better. And remember, the blades are made of metal. So don't bend them. And I can just take them out, all of them. And get rid of this hole. Who <laughs> you are, my Stay there. Okay. So there. And it's also important to to be sure where the blades uh, which direction and it can only be one way so no there's no need to think about okay does it go right no it will be pretty fine and the blades wow they look fine And the last three of them. And here we are. So mm -hmm. so And now it's fine. There's still something on here that needs to come off <clears throat> because on the um, on the pin here, where the where the plates are sitting in the plates, there could be some uh, oil. That you really need to get rid of. Because it will also stick to the to the aperture system. But I think it looks fine for now. And uh, now it's time to assemble the whole thing. And everything looks fine. Now the uh, the first part that goes in is uh, this plate. It's uh, with a one pin here that um, I'm pretty sure will go here, and because I know that is if we flip it over the spring that sits here okay we can get rid of this ball see the uh, this pin here will go to the spring that is here so why that's why I know exactly where this goes to So 
so and it sits there and it works pretty good that way and then I can add the plates to the whole system and I can use my my special tweezer here to add the plates to where they should sit so <clears throat> well I could add also no I'll just put on all the blades in because then because then they just sit where they should and I go counterclockwise I mean yeah counterclockwise put the blades in So there, so come in little pin, so it sit there, and again the last pin, I mean the last blade that goes in I need to flip out the, the blade that it sits next to it. Okay, it can be a little annoying to find the hole. Yeah, so it's there. So now, <clears throat> to get the next, I mean the last blade in, I need to flip out this blade. Here. So the hole where this pin goes into uh, sits there. Now <clears throat> to um, get it correct in I can push down on this pin here. And simply lift up, hopefully, lift up the plate. Oh, it needs a little more movement. Lift it up and then push it all the way in over. And then it sits. Now be sure where the the, um, where the blades uh, is in a circle so now it's ready but before doing so I need to put in the um, this uh, brass ring which I took out, took out earlier and maybe you remember I set a mark where it should sit and this uh, gap here should sit where the pin is for the spring. So, and uh, where did my tweezer go? Yeah. Put this on where it should sit no <laughs> not yet I forgot something I forgot something of course I need the plate to put on first <laughs> I mean this one <laughs> yeah well the one is perfect So have them sit in a 
fully round circle and then add this plate and it can be a little annoying to put in the, pla the plate because um, see there the aperture has to be fully open so and then it should be possible to move the ring a little I mean this plate and have the uh, mm -hmm. you see there is something wrong this uh, plate needs to come on after not so the plate here needs to come off I mean on before so things sits like this as it was before see <clears throat> that's what I think there was something wrong so I just put this on here so there and uh, then I can just add the plate and hopefully set things correct and since I have my mark here it shouldn't be a problem I know it sounds silly but uh, so it is And all the pins, the small pin from each aperture blade should sit there. And here we are. Then we'll just add one screw. Where's my screwdriver here? This one. This one. And simply screw in the uh, the brass plate, which is only sitting one screw. So this plate sits correct. And then should be possible. Oh gosh. <laughs> and where do you go? Okay, I have to load a screw to my screwdriver then it should be easy to put in one screw and be sure things sit in the correct place. This blade, hmm. Oh, come on. So it's there. And then I can add my screw, one of the screws. I not fully tightened it yet. Ah. 
So, and the last one. We go here. Uh, yeah, there. And when all the screws are in, I can just adjust my uh, my plate here to the mark where it should sit. Hmm. Shouldn't have tightened tightened the screw that much. So here we are, and now the mark is correct, and then I can tighten the screws. It's a funny construction, I mean, it's a funny, funny way they make it. But now it's fine. Then I can flip it over and put on the, uh, the spring. But not yet, actually. <laughs> Not yet, because the uh, the half moon part needs to come on. Uh, where is my flat screwdriver here? So, <clears throat> and then add screw here and tighten it. And then you can see the aperture is actually working much better. So when I add the spring here, I would guess it will be very snappy if one can use that word. <laughs> so, and you see, wow, that's great. Now add this uh, tool, I mean, <laughs> a piece of metal, I don't know what it called, is a cam kind of and it should sit like this and there was therefore I set a mark here so I know it should sit and not that way of course I think it's not possible to put it correct I mean um, to put it in the wrong way but just in case of things get um, a little bit tricky then the locking ring comes in and then we are almost all the way back to normal working condition. I think it would be pretty good. So now, haha, <laughs> that's great. So if I put this this uh, pin on here. It will be the aperture ring itself. It also runs very smooth without any problem. And now it's uh, actually time to uh, add the aperture ring. This one goes in here. No, oh, the aperture ring has to come on first. And of course, <clears throat> the little spring that uh, and the steel bolt that sits here, actually in line. If you look carefully, it's in line with the index mark. So I, it wasn't necessary to set a mark here. So, but well, better safe than not safe. <laughs> so I will add the spring here. 
so. And uh, it will make it easier to, if I add a little grease here, that I could put the, the steel ball on. And I will just use some ordinary super loop and just a tiny amount. Very little. And simply put it on here so the spring, I mean the steel ball will have something to sit on. And add the steel ball. So and then the aperture ring. And uh, we have the all the click notches here. <clears throat> so I can just put it on. But uh, I need to do it very carefully. So. And then use my dentist tool to press down the steel ball and the spring all the way in and put the the aperture ring over. So and then I have my click here. Don't don't move move the the aperture ring over to this side because then the uh, the big notch here will uh, lock into the steel ball. So only you move the aperture ring in the area of 2.8 up to 22. If you move it farther over too much, you will need to take off the aperture ring again and put in the steel ball and the spring. So just a note. So now I can add this, uh, this, the auto manual ring. Uh, but before doing so, I need to put in this ring. This pin here, part of the pin, will um, engage with the notch here. This notch. See. And the, this pin will go into the fork down here. So it sits like that. Then I can move my aperture ring without any problem. And then add this ring. which is only can sit one way, because I set a mark here as a reference to the index mark. So, and simply add the rest of the screws. And then we are almost done. There and the aperture ring is safe in correct place. And then I can add the lens element and mount, and then we're done. So you see, it's not that hard to, to work with this uh, lens. So, and uh, where did it go? The back lens group here needs to put in. And tighten it with a rubber tool or whatever you do that way. So. And then I can add my mount. This fork here will go into the um, 
to this hole here that actually moved the aperture plates and the auto manual um, should just put in all the things it can be a little tricky to put in this pin yeah but so and then I will move my um, my mount so it fall into place then I can add the, the screws here for the mount and you have to align it correct <laughs> We only need the two front, <coughs> the middle lens group and the front lens group, and the name ring. And then we're done with a fully working aperture. So you can see it's not that hard to work with, and everything is working proper even if it's set to auto and aperture 22 see the plates are working as it should now this uh, lens element is a bit uh, oily around here I will just wipe away some of the rest of the oil <clears throat> yeah there is just something on the lens element so I will just do some Gently leaning with some lighter fluid before I uh, actually assemble the whole thing. This is just ordinary extra uh, lighter fluid, so I can just put it on here. Here we are. Great. There's also something on the back, so I can just <coughs> do that too. Just so it looks nice. Just a small hair. I simply don't know where they come from. <laughs> sometimes they are there and sometimes not. So I can uh, add the this uh, lens element using my rubber tool and put it over here. Nothing left. So and it says click somewhere I mean it should come on <laughs> what's going on here okay so here we are There and the uh, this lens tool to 
screw it all to the end. Tighten it gently. And then add the front, the very front lens element. And also again I will use my rubber tool to put it on. Okay, so and then tighten it. So there it is, and then the name plate comes on, and then we are done. So, that was, uh, that was actually that. So now it's a fine working aperture in this uh, fine lens. Wow, that's great. So, that was all for now, and uh, hope you enjoy the uh, the content and can use it to fix your lens. So that's all. Bye bye.